one more year, one more GoPro. And we've all seen the reviews on the image quality, but what about the GPS quality? Let's find out. To do so, we will enable the GPS in the original settings of the camera, then record some footage outdoors and use telemetry extractor to review the data. Find the link in the video description. We will try this with a Hero 9 file first for comparison. We can just drag and drop our video, let it load, and the first good news is that there is in fact a GPS stream. So we click on it and then select view map to review the recorded path. But this does not look as expected. The path is not following a road, it recorded some extreme coordinates far from our location. Altitude is also showing some extreme values and the top speed is completely unreasonable for a motorbike. And this is how the Hero 9 files looked at launch. There was a problem with the GPS, which they fixed with firmware updates later on. How does that compare to the Hero 10 at launch? Let's find out. And the GPS stream is also there. When we open the map, the path seems good, it does follow a road, the altitude is reasonable along the road, and the top speed is reasonable for a normal vehicle. Let's compare the 10 with the 9 side by side with the latest firmware. And for that, we will use telemetry overlay. See links in the description. We just need to load the file and we'll be presented with some preset gauges that you can of course customize. And as we can see side by side, the speed looks reasonable and it looks the same on both cameras. The entire GPS route looks very accurate as well. And if we zoom in, both paths follow the road almost perfectly. And this is expected, both cameras are using the same GPS antenna. If we take a look at the altitude, it's also very good, which is rare for GPS receivers, as elevation needs a better signal than just latitude and longitude. This is the typical case of a good GPS signal on a GoPro, very high frequency data and very accurate coordinates, but that only happens in optimal conditions, as we will see later. Now let's compare the Hero 10 with some of its alternatives. We will test it against an Insta360 with the GPS remote and against a third camera with an external GPS tracker. Here the GoPro session will represent any camera that does not have GPS and the Garmin smartwatch will represent any external data you can record with a smartphone, smartwatch or almost any external GPS tracker. We will not compare them against drones, despite them generally recording very good GPS data, because they are not action cams, and we're also not including old cameras like the Garmin Verb or other GPS enabled cameras with a much more narrow focus like dash cams. The first test will be again under optimal conditions, with the three cameras outside of a car in an upright position, so with plenty of access to a clean sky for a strong GPS signal. And straight away we see very good results from all three options. Both the entire path and the zoomed in one follow the road quite closely. The speeds are all good, although there are small differences. And altitudes are generally good as well, although the signal on the GoPro is maybe a little noisier. All three devices record some inaccurate coordinates every now and then, but they're pretty good. The second test will be more challenging. On a chest mount, our body covers half of the sky, which means the camera has more difficult access to the satellites. Again, all three full paths look quite similar, but we're starting to see some differences on the GoPro. However, when we zoom in, both the GoPro and the Insta360 have completely missed the walkway. The Garmin, however, is performing really well. The GoPro has an excuse for this as it's chest mounted, but the GPS remote of the Insta is wrist mounted like the Garmin, so it has no excuse. Moving on to speeds, the GoPro seems too high and the Insta is roughly correct. But the real big difference in GPS signal quality shows up when looking at elevation. Both the GoPro and the Insta make absolutely no sense altitude wise, and that's because they would require more satellites inside to compute elevation, but the Garmin on the other hand is using a barometer, and that makes it much more reliable. Once we get into more difficult areas, like under a bridge, the GoPro misses the path wildly and the Insta is not great but pretty close. Every now and then the Insta goes on a weird hike as well, like over buildings, so both the Insta and the GoPro have mixed results, the Insta was slightly better. And finally, the most difficult test for the GoPro will be having it upside down within a city. The GPS antenna on the GoPro is on the top next to the record button, so turning it upside down means the antenna won't see any of the satellites in the sky we will lose the GPS signal and it won't be recovered for the entire video. With the GoPro out of the way, let's compare the Insta and the Garmin. Both do generally well for the entire path. If we zoom in though, both veer off track every now and then. That's somewhat expected, cities are difficult environments, but the errors of the Insta360 are more pronounced. Speeds are both generally good, and again the most dramatic difference is altitude. The Garmin is good, the Insta is unusable. So summing up, the GoPro is great under optimal conditions, easy access to a clean sky, it has the highest data frequency, therefore it's best for acceleration, 
and it's convenient as the camera and the GPS are just one package. The downside? It doesn't perform well in medium to bad conditions. The Insta is also good in good conditions and it's better in medium conditions. You do have to buy the GPS remote separately and the remote does crash every now and then. Compared to the GoPro, it also takes longer to find the GPS signal until you can record and the data frequency is still quite good. And finally, using an external tracker generally gives you good results, as even a smartphone will record good GPS data assisted by the cellular antennas. Of course, having a second device can be a bit more work, but not as much as you may think. Frequencies of simple devices tend to be quite low, around one sample per second, but there are also professional devices that record at a higher rate. So the safe recommendation is use the camera you like and an external GPS tracking device, either as a backup if the camera fails to record a good signal or as a way to enhance your videos by adding metrics more specific to your activity. You can achieve this in telemetry overlay with a wide range of supported devices. One thing to note is that when the GPS signal is not exactly accurate, telemetry overlay cleans it up and smoothens it. It does so automatically, but you can also fine tune it. And also be aware that if the GoPro software tells you you don't have a GPS signal, that's not necessarily true. So check that with the provided tools instead. Okay, I hope that was useful. Looking forward to seeing what you create. Feel free to ask any questions and see you in the next one.